I know thy works, and tribulation, and poverty, but thou art rich. Welcome to the Black Excellence and Abundance Channel. King Solomon, according to the Bible, the wisest and the richest man who ever lived. Today, on the Black Excellence and Abundance Channel, we will be taking a look at the life of the richest man who ever lived, King Solomon, the son of King David. Yes, the same David who slew Goliath. The same David who became king of Israel. We know that from biblical, historical, geographical, and archaeological evidence that the Hebrews were black. As depicted here in this Assyrian relief. The Assyrians were one of the first to enslave the biblical Hebrew Israelites. And this drawing by the Assyrians shows how the Hebrews looked. Notice the locks of their hair. Notice the beards. Hebrews always wore beards and they always had locks. The reason we find it necessary to show and establish the earliest depictions of the Hebrew Israelites as black because oftentimes we see all types of images displaying the true Hebrews as something other than what they really were. Nothing can tell the story better than the people who were themselves there when the Hebrews were enslaved by the Assyrians other than the Assyrians. Again, we want to make it clear that these slides that we're showing are from the Assyrian captivity by the Assyrians of the Biblical Hebrew Israelites. Further proof of the true images of the Biblical Hebrew Israelites can be found in the catacombs of Paris, France, where in the catacombs can be found the earliest depictions of the Hebrew Israelites. Here's a picture of what is believed to be Solomon, showing the actual color of his skin. Black. Solomon was a black man. These are more images of the early Hebrew Israelites before the Renaissance. And it is obvious who these people really were. Scratch a lie and find a thief. Ladies and gentlemen, in the Bible, the Shulamite woman told Solomon, I am black yet comely, black and lovely as the tents of Kedar. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a tent of Kedar. An early picture of the Black Madonna and the baby Yahshua, baby Jesus, who incidentally the Pope prays to. Folks, I think it's quite obvious who the real biblical Hebrew Israelites were. Now we can go on and on and on and do a whole video on just that subject, but this video 
is about King Solomon, the wisest and the richest man in biblical history. Now that we've established the identity of this great black Hebrew leader, King Solomon ruled from 970 BC to 931 BC. And during this time, he is said to have received 25 tons of gold for each of the 39 years of his reign, which would be worth billions of dollars today. Along with impossible riches amassed from taxation and trade, the biblical ruler's personal fortune could have surpassed $2 trillion in today's money. In addition to the taxes paid by the traders and merchants, the kings of Arabia and the governors of the Israelite districts also brought him silver and gold. Solomon made 200 large shields, each of which covered with about 15 pounds of beaten gold, and 300 smaller shields, each covered with about 8 pounds of beaten gold. He had them all placed in the hall of the forest of Lebanon. The king also had a large throne made. Part of it was covered with ivory and the rest of it was covered with pure gold. Six steps led up to the throne and there was a footstool attached to it, covered with gold. There were arms of each side of the throne and the figure of a lion stood at each side. Twelve figures of the lions were on the steps, one at either end of each step. No throne like this had ever existed in any other kingdom. All of King Solomon's drinking cups were made of gold and all of the utensils in the hall of the forest of Lebanon were made of pure gold. Silver was not considered valuable in Solomon's day. He had a fleet of ocean-going ships sailing with King Harem's fleet. Every three years, his fleet would return, bringing gold, silver, ivory, apes, and monkeys. King Solomon was richer and wiser than any other king in the world. They all consulted him to hear the wisdom that God had given him. Each of them brought gifts, articles of silver and gold, robes, weapons, spices, horses, and mules. This continued year after year. King Solomon also had 4,000 stalls for his chariots and horses and had 12,000 cavalry horses. Some of them he kept in Jerusalem and the rest he stationed in various other cities. He was supreme ruler of all the kings in the territory from the Euphrates River to Philistia and the Egyptian border. During his reign, silver was as common in Jerusalem as stone and cedar was as plentiful as ordinary sycamore in the foothills of Judah. The Queen of Sheba came specially to Jerusalem to hear Solomon's wisdom. She was so impressed that she gave him camels, jewels, and a large quantity of gold and other gifts. She presented to King Solomon the gifts she had brought, almost five tons of gold. Part of the reason that Solomon was so wealthy, it was that the people loved him. They came to him from miles around for his advice, and they all came bearing gifts, usually of gold, silver, and all types of herbs, spices, and amenities. According to the Bible, Solomon's temple, also known as the first temple, was the holy temple in ancient Jerusalem. This temple was built as a monument to God, as well as a permanent home for the Ark of the Covenant. Although the temple had been built by Solomon, the idea for its construction was conceived by his father, King David. The Israelite king had intended to build a great temple in order to provide a permanent home for the Ark of the Covenant which contained the stone tablets on which the Ten Commandments were inscribed. However, the Most High forbade David from building this temple, as he had shed much blood during the many battles he fought in. Thus, it was only a generation later, during the reign of Solomon, that the temple was finally constructed. The structure was three stories in height. It had ledges on which the floor beams rested. Around the structure was a series of chambers of varying size. The temple was also provided with windows of fixed latticework. At the rear, this edifice was also known as the Holy of Holies, which was in form a perfect cube. Each of its dimensions being 20 cubits, the interior 
was lined with cedar and overlaid with pure gold. Chains of gold further marked it off from the Holy of Holies. The floor of the temple was a fir wood overlaid with gold. The doorposts of the olive wood supported folding doors of fir. The doors of the Holy of Holies were of olive wood. This edifice was one of the most amazing buildings ever erected. The Most High Yahweh gave King Solomon what he did not ask for. He asked for wisdom, and the Most High blessed him with riches beyond his wildest dream. He was in fact the richest man, the richest king of all kings in the Bible. During King Solomon's reign, the Israelites enjoyed an unsurpassed peace and prosperity. The Black Excellence and Abundance Channel, where Black history is every day. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And as always, Thou, thou art rich. rich.